goes for recording. So this is our community call number nine. Uh, we wanted to make in English and in Russian. So we now host two community calls, one on Wednesday, last Wednesday of the month. Second time it's last Thursday of the month. Today's last Thursday of the month. So this is a community call number nine. Well, we want to make our AI assistants, our social boards for the surprise and so on very intelligent. Uh, this illustrates perfectly what kind of challenge we actually have. Uh, users say something and we try to quickly uh, comprehend what was said and find a good answer. And in a very short time, and sometimes it looks resorted to something like you've seen on this video. So what we want to talk today uh, and um, it's not going to be a lot of things today, uh, but anyways, uh, we want to talk about a couple of things. First, where we will talk this uh, summer, and second, um, our intermediate releases uh, 015 and 016. Um, so we will have lots of Russian events uh, happening in the next uh, months or so. Uh, we'll have a couple of events in the end of May. Um, Mikhail Burtsuk, he will talk uh, on offline event in Penza. Now he will talk about inspired by brain, how deep neural networks revolutionized AI field. And then one of our interns uh, will talk online and data, data fest, and he will give his talk on how to build all multi-scale AI assistant uh, using the power dream. They built a copy of C3PO from Star Wars and uh, they will give a token to DataFest. And then we will continue with a couple of talks focused on uh, managing dialog strategy using discourse management, um, uh, followed with uh, deep dive into speech function classifiers that we've built in the last few months at DeepAlo. We'll have then uh, three talks, paid events, offline events, um, and online events in Novosibirsk, Penza, and St. Petersburg. And there is one more event. Uh, it's not yet here on the list, but it will actually be in English. Uh, it will be in Tomsk. And uh, you can visit deep Pavlov data AI slash events to learn more about this event. It will be in English. It will also be focused on uh, designing discourse-driven strategy for multi-skill AI systems, but unlike the other events, it will be in English, not in Russian. So it will be available to the general public. And, uh, okay, speaking of what's gonna happen next in uh, version 0 0.16, uh, we want to share our latest work on Go-oriented framework called GoBot. Uh, and uh, its integration with M10 Catcher, which is our primary way of um, identify, identifying intents in um, goal-oriented and open domain um, chatbots and AI systems. In short, GoBot is our framework for building goal-oriented skills and uh, some commercial customers are already using it. And we're also working on out utilizing it uh, in our Alexa price for social bot. Currently, it uses Rust 1.0 format for working with uh, their files uh, like stories, YML, uh, NLU YAML, and domain YAML, where intents, responses, forms, and uh, slots are um, defined. But what we want to do is to migrate to version 2.0 Rust format as we promised back in February. And uh, we want to add the intent catcher to the mix so that you would be able to not only define intents like in Brasa format, but also to use our format to um, uh, minimize time that you need to spend on uh, defining intents in the system. Let me show you what we're talking about. So uh, in uh, Rasa to the toe format, uh, you define intents, uh, responses, and so on in domain.email. But then in nlu.email, which is um, which used to be in Markdown, but now in YAML in two to two format of their uh, system, you can define something not only intents themselves, like here, where it show examples, and you actually need maybe tens hundreds, maybe thousands of examples in production systems, production systems. 
and uh, Rasa to the dogs, they allow you to also use regex as a feature that allows you to also identify uh, to also make some sort of pattern matching when you want to identify one of uh, intents that you defined in uh, domain email. So for example, here we can say sign up newsletter, ask which events, greet, and uh, in the actual system, it is expected that you will write something like intent, greet, then you will uh, so uh, say examples. And we'll write example like hi, how, and so on. And then if you will write this regex as a, in, instead of intent, we'll write a regex uh, and, and then you will call its name. It will be picked as a feature for the intent. What we are adding to the mix is we do the following. We add one more uh, component to the intent itself. You have to add this moniker as a second line of your document without it should go after the uh, comment um, symbol. And uh, you can write uh, these examples in regular uh, uh, in uh, regex. And what will happen is uh, they will be expanded into lots of different examples. And these examples will uh, then be transformed into training data set, allowing you to write uh, like tens of lines of examples for your intent. And you will get hundreds or maybe uh, thousands of examples generated from these forget examples. So currently we have um, this demo. Now we have a demo of the system uh, working internally, and we hope to uh, release 0.16 version of the Palo uh, framework uh, with uh, this integration of Gobot and Intent Catcher. Uh, and we will publish a tutorial. And we will also integrate this, as I said before, into our DP distribution. Gobot base. So you will be able to use uh, Intent Catcher combined with Gobot in uh, your goal oriented and mixed uh, AI systems built on top of DP. So that's what we want to ship in the next version. Another thing that we also want to ship in the next version is um, our PyTorch based uh, named entity uh, extraction. We are doing a huge work in migrating Dipalo from TensorFlow version 1.0 to uh, PyTorch. And in uh, the last version we released a couple of weeks ago, uh, 0.15, we've made foundational work in uh, preparing this migration from uh, TensorFlow to PyTorch. And near component will be one of the first components that we will uh, release on PyTorch on top of PyTorch. Later this uh, summer, we will have three Google Summer of Code interns uh, joining us, and Nastasia is one of them. And they will work on uh, three cool things. Uh, let me go back here. Yeah. One of them will be multitask BERT. The second one is going to be relation extraction. And the third one will be uh, focused on uh, updating architecture for our GoBot framework using TripPy architecture. And by the end of uh, this summer, uh, all these three interns, uh, they will uh, showcase their work on all of the three components. And uh, we hope to get these components integrated into the library and make them available to the general public. Okay, now that we have just uh, three, three of us here, I'm not sure if we have lots of questions here, but um, given that this will also go on record and will be available on our website, um, on YouTube, 
Anastasia, maybe you will, you want to tell a couple words about your passion for relation extraction here. Um, oh, <laughs> I don't know what exactly I could tell now. Um, yeah, in general, like I am dealing with relation extraction quite a while, just like a couple of years, and I think it's really like this task is much bigger than the people think about that, and uh, it's really it's really cool to. Um, I don't know, just to um, just to summarize the facts with that, for example, and that's that's really important because like we as humans understand uh, understand like how the entities are related to each other, how the people are related to each other. I don't know, some objects in space around us, but uh, the computers, so presumably, computers should do the same. And uh, if computer a computer can do the same, it it really makes much more are much smarter and um, behaving like like humans do. So that's why I think it's it's really it's really a nice task and it really should be done and should be implemented at all level and in all systems. So yeah, that's that's my my impression to it. So yeah, really really happy to uh, to be able to to do something in this direction here in Republic as well. Let me do something here. I will create an open slide. And I will share it for a moment. And I want to draw a couple of things on it. <laughs> Not exactly what some uninv un uninvited guest decided to draw in the beginning of this community call, uh, I hope. So definitely our relation extraction is uh, interesting because when you have a couple of entities, entity one and entity two, there can obviously be some sort of a relation between them. So for example, we can say that Barack, Obama um, visited um, Paris, to discuss. Um, uh, sorry, I think you uh, you don't share the screen now. I can still see you. Now oh my screen. God! Give a second. Share again. Can you see it? Uh, yeah. Now it works. Climate summit. Oh my God! Let me go back. Climate summit. So for example, we have a couple of entities, entity one, entity two, and we want to find some relation. But I mean, this is obviously the premise. We have like a uh, couple of ent entities. We want to find a relationship between them, but uh, a relation between them, but it's actually harder. So obviously we can identify some of the uh, entities here, Barack Obama, Paris, Climate Summit. The question is, how would we represent this information in the system? The easiest thing would be to say that we have entity, entity, entity. And the easier thing would be to say that this is entity, I don't know, Q1, this is entity Q2, where Q actually is a reference to Wikidata, which where all entities have this small kind of codes. Because I don't want to go to Wikidata right now and link to Wikidata, so I just put these uh, things into the system. So then we could say that Q1 uh, did something to Q2, right? And maybe Q1, something to Q3. And maybe also Q2, something uh, happened to Q3. Am I right, Anastasia? Um, yeah, pretty much. Yeah. So relation would go to somewhere like this, right? Uh, to, to like. So that would be relation number one. And this will be relation number two. But we actually can see three relations, but we have only two um, uh, verbs here. How you would um, 
how would we uh, actually uh, find the relation between Q2 and Q3? What do you think? Mm. Between Q2 and Q3? Like to build again a knowledge graph to see like uh, what about what Barack Obama did in Paris? Can we say the climate climate summit? For example, let's let's assume that we obviously know that Barack Obama is person. Then this is obviously location. And this is actually event, which is funny because right now we are using uh, traditional main entity extraction um, classes, people, uh, locations, and events, people, organizations, locations, events. Can we say that this event happened in location? Can we deduce the fact that climate summit was held in Paris? Mm. Yeah, if we know that Barack Obama discussed climate summit and Barack Obama was in Paris, we can presume that this climate summit was in Paris. Or so we have to actually deduce it, right? Mm, yep. Well, do other relationships uh, obviously can be extracted uh, from the phrase itself? Mm -hmm. Uh, let's make it complicated, a bit more complicated. Let's say that he discussed climate summit. Dasha Yoko host, so please add other folks as they will join us. So let's say that Barack Obama discussed climate summit. In Paris. Okay, we again can grab climate summit and we can grab the fact that there is Paris. Paris. This is again entity and its location. This is entity, this is event, and this is verb. So now we have a harder problem, right? We can mm -hmm. still discuss, we can still find this relation between Barack Obama and now let's put just for, just to keep the same order of things. Let's say that's good turn to three. We can find the connection between Barack Obama and climate summit, but what will happen between uh, Barack Obama and how can we say that Barack Obama actually visited Paris? Uh, but we also could deduce it. Like if we know that climate summit was in Paris and Barack Obama was in climate summit, that means that Barack Obama was in Paris, right? But what if you don't, what if you have just this phrase? Can we deduce the fact that Barack Obama visited Paris just because we know that there is climate summit, we know that there is Paris, is there, and Paris, uh, Paris, and we know that there is Barack Obama. We should have just this phrase. Can we extract the fact that he visited Paris? Paris. Mm. Well, it depends on how, like how, um, fine brained our relation extraction is, whether we did use the first relation. If we have, for example, like, I don't know, pattern discussed when someone discussed and someone event, and if we, we, we can build such a system that understand that that means that he worked there, then okay, then it works. Uh -huh. So it seems to me that if you want to extract entities in the document, you can, um, you don't have maybe to rely upon um, the need to deduce things, right? You don't have to um, mm -hmm. use this mechanism. But if you want to uh, find relations between entities, you have to use uh, some logic behind your solution. Am I right? 
Mm, what do what do you mean? I don't think I get it. <laughs> Logic. I mean, uh, we have to deduce the data. We have three entities here, but we have just one uh, one verb that gives us a hint about relation between two entities. Mm, we also have a proposition, uh, like between Climate Summit and Paris, right? And yep. so that we could uh, definitely deduce the second relation. We uh, we know, so we are like 100% sure that Climate Summit and Paris are, uh, are connected with located, uh, like, I don't know, place relation, right? Mm -hmm. And we can also try to build a connection between Barack Obama and Paris. Mm -hmm. Because they are basically also connected with in preposition, <laughs> in preposition somewhere in between. Uh, that means that Barack Obama was in Paris and Climate Summit was in Paris. And that maybe could help us to, to draw some relation between Barack Obama and Climate Summit. Uh huh. Like to do it otherwise, uh, other way around. Okay. Uh, okay. I wonder um, is it needed to have some kind of ontology behind uh, the relation extraction to make this kind of deductions? Or is it possible to avoid uh, ontology use and knowledge graph use to make this kind of relation extraction work? I think with ontology, it would be much easier, much better, and maybe the results would be much better. But I well, well, I won't. Uh, I won't say that it's totally impossible to build relation extraction without ontology. <laughs> okay, like ontology could help. That that's that's really great. That's what what I'm um, also uh, tried to do with big supervision when we use like this ontology to annotate the data, and it really helps. Uh, and if you know the some relations already, it definitely it's good. But I want to claim that it's the only way to build relation extraction. Okay. Okay. Well, in general, um, yesterday we had a great uh, question from uh, some of our users, um, how to do entity extraction for entities that are going behind, going beyond classes that are specified by named entity extraction, like classic people location, event, mm -hmm. and so on. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And um, we also discussed relation extraction a little bit. Unfortunately, we were not there yesterday, where we had much more people than today. Uh, so uh, we, that, that chance was missed. Uh, but I believe it would be very interesting to get relation extraction uh, used not only in generic solutions, where I agree it might be possible to not use, oh, you got Anshuman with us, where it is possible to use just language models without any kind of knowledge graph, but for more specific domains, it might be more important to actually mm -hmm. have mm -hmm. this kind of ontology behind the system. Mm, okay, yeah, definitely. Like, uh, I totally agree that the ontology is it's crucial. It's really, it's really good to have it, right? Yeah, I agree with that. Right. Okay, Antraman, hi. Hello. Hello. So today we have the the smallest community to call we ever had, which is uh, quite strange. We're still experimenting with having two community calls a month. One in English, one in Russian. Yesterday we had more, like more than ten people with us, uh, and today we had a crazy income of people who were, were just I don't know strangers started to draw different things and so on, and they went. Thankfully, we didn't record that, but anyway, that was really crazy. So our community call is practically speaking go where we just but i wanted to have this very small discussion with anastasia about your work and relation extraction and i wanted also to make it available for people who will watch this record later in our youtube channel yeah oh. that's great so yeah that's about it um mm -hmm. let me stop sharing <laughs>